Good gracious, it's been a while. Let's get the old thing going again then. Hey folks, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Hey there, Internet! Yes, I'm back! Back for a sensational sixth season of my House of Love! For more fun, more frolics, and all of the surprises that I couldn't actually get to last year. And to kick off, it's time to scratch a particular itch. You see, in between the releases of Hellboy 1 and 2, there were a couple of animated releases featuring our curmudgeonly Crimson Crusader and I've been meaning to get around to one or the other of them for a long time now. Since I reviewed Hellboy 1, in fact. So today, I present to you Hellboy Animated, Sword of Storm. Released straight to DVD in 2006, Sword of Storms is the tale of a possessed mythologist and the BPRD's efforts to deal with that possession and its effects. Receiving generally positive reviews, this animated excursion would seem the perfect entry into the weird and often not so wonderful world of the BPRD. So come with me, my friends, as we uncover the wonders and horrors of ancient Japan in Hellboy Animated Sword of Storm. We open in an ancient South American temple. Abe Sapien and Liz Sherman are on the trail of a lost colleague. Sadly, said colleague is very dead. Which is more than can be said for the foot soldiers Abe triggers. After an amusing scuffle, Liz sets them all aflame. Pull it back, Liz! Pull it back! It's me, kiddo. It did good. This is important, not only because of the banter in action, but because it shows Liz Sherman's troubles with controlling her ability, which she laments on the ride back to base. I would show you, but... YouTube. God, I hate YouTube sometimes. And we cut to Japan, and the story proper. So then, this scroll tells the tale of the twin demons Thunder and Lightning who terrorised a powerful daimyo. To sate them, the daimyo promised the demons his daughter, but the samurai in his charge was having none of it, hid the daughter, and trapped the demons in his magical sword. All of which makes me wonder exactly how they managed to get into the scroll to be able to possess the professor in the first place. But something else was contained within that package. And it drives the Professor toward the legendary Sword of Storms. But the sword has ideas of its own about that. <laughs> ah, the spirits of magical weaponry. The stories I could tell. Margaret, spirit of Linkara's magic gun, was unavailable for comment. Enter the BPRD, being Kate Corrigan, Russell Thorne, and HB. I hate psychics. I know, I know. Hellboy inadvertently picks up the Sword of Storms, which takes him to the spirit world. First, he's mistaken for the samurai by the daimyo's daughter. You see, after the demons had been trapped by the samurai, the daimyo was angry about having broken his word, so he found the daughter and beheaded her, restoring his honour. 
Dante Vasco was available for comment, but not at such short notice. Sorry dude, maybe next time. Then, he chances on a bunch of people-eating demon heads, a Koto-playing Spider Queen, and a copper. Though truth be told, it's the sunrise that puts pay to the demon heads, and Hellboy just straight nopes it out of the Spider Woman encounter. In fact, it's only the Kappa that he has any active part in defeating. But the Kappa at least has some answers for our purveyor of violent vermilion vengeance. So it turns out that these thunder and lightning demons are in fact the Brothers of Dragons, and hold the key to awakening some sub-Cthulhu tentacles or some such nonsense. When it comes to such Cthulhu-based rubbish, I'm with Captain Redbeard. I don't holes with it. All of which leads him to a graveyard. An army of undead. And a battle with a giant spirit troll. Pity that it was only a diversion, as it disintegrates, leaving our hero to break the sword on the samurai's stone statue and return to our world. Now, while all this has been going on, Kate Corrigan and Russell Thorne have been in Japan in Professor Sakai's office, investigating it and trying to deduce his whereabouts. Also, there's a subplot with Liz Sherman learning to control her powers and not get lost in them, which we're skipping because YouTube. What a way to open the series. But it was Professor Sakai that was acting against our hero all along. Kate meets HB at the shrine to face down the demons and bring this to an end. Which goes about as well as you'd expect, until our Crimson Crusader has a brainwave. But there's still the little matter of the Daimyo's daughter, which HB resolves in his own inimitable straight-talking style. You just have to forgive them or else we'll end up doing this all over again. Hellboy animated, Sword of Storms, and yeah, yeah, I'm going to put this one into the House of Love. This tale, and its companion piece, Blood and Iron, have a notable pedigree in the form of US studio film Roman, and supervising director Tad Stones, of the legendary Disney shows of the early 90s. Not to mention, of course, the blessing of original creator Mike Mignola, the movie cast, and the addition of Perry Gilpin in the role of Kate Corrigan, the animation is fluid, the performances are shot through with the snark and wit that makes this tale positively sparkle. It's not all good news though. Professor Sakai is an ephemeral villain, the plot device of Hellboy travelling through what amounts to a dream sequence come greatest hits of Japanese folklore doesn't come off to me as especially fresh. Still. It's carried off with grace and style, and the designs of Sean Cheeks Galloway, who puts a fresh spin on the world's weirdest. Overall then, The Sword of Storms is a good introduction to the world of the BPRD. At least in my opinion. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks! Join the heroic legion of Patreon subscribers today! You could get your name in the credits, early access to new episodes, 
Request your favourite game, movie or anime to be reviewed. Or even be in the show yourself. Sign up at my Patreon site. I'll see you there.